All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another video. This Python tip or trick is going to be about variables, and so we're just going to chat a little bit about those uh, and maybe some things to do to keep yourself out of trouble and maybe just a little bit on a little bit on on scope. Okay, so first of all, we have to be just a little bit careful about how we make assignments. Now, when we make assignments, that's with the equal sign, and so. It's something really easy to gloss over, but what we're saying is that the thing on the right is going to be put into the thing on the left. And that's what the equal sign is all about. But before we do that, I, I'll just say that I think of variables as containers, and so maybe a shoebox. And so into the shoebox, you're going to put something. And we're going to call the shoebox something, and then the thing that we put into the shoebox will have some value and actually a type. So let's do this. We'll say a is equal to 5. Now in this case the variable becomes a and the thing that we assign to a is 5. We could also do something like this. We could say var1 is equal to a. So you can use uh, names that are better indicators of variables. It's always a good idea to use variable names that sort of make sense for what you're going to do. If somebody was to look at this code and say, well, a is equal to 5, well, what is a for? What are we using it for? So if we were doing geometric calculations, I might say, you know, um, diameter. Oops, diameter is equal to 16. Something of that sort. So that's pretty clear what that is. If I was using a for diameter, right? It might not make much sense later on. But let's do a little something here. Let's say, well, what is in A? What, uh, what type of data is in A? And you can see that Python tells me, well, I can do the type of an object. And the minute we create a variable, a variable is one example of an object. And this tells me that the, the information inside A is an integer. If I do the type of var1, right, then I get that that is a string, and that's because I put it in either the single quotes or the double quotes. We don't need to do the same thing with diameter. It's going to be the same. Now, one of the things that we have to be a little careful of is that if we use something that might look like a variable name and we try to stick that inside of another variable, so if I say var2 is equal to b, then I get a problem because it doesn't know what B is. And this is because the way that I've referenced B without the quotations. Now I suppose we can also do some fun stuff with our assignments too. We could say C and D are equal to uh, 2 and 3, like that. And then I could say print. Well, maybe we'll do it backwards just so we can see what we can do like that. And so you can, the minute you make the reference, right, you can, you can access it later on. And maybe what we'll do is realize that once we, once we instantiate variables, they stay those values. If we've done it globally, right, inside your main program, if we've done it globally, then they'll stay that value unless they're changed by a function. So I might have a function it says something like this, like that, and I'll just say print C and D in there. And then I'll call function 1. And we can see that the, uh, the values for C and D right up there have been printed out here, even though I didn't get them passed into the function. And that's because these were declared outside of the function. Now, if inside the function I did something like this, and I said c is equal to 99, and then I said print oops, c and d, like that, and then I called function 2, we can see that I actually changed the value. But what happens if I print c and d right now? back to 2 and 3. And that's because this was only changed in the function. And that is sort of a lesson in scope. By the way, when we start talking about type, 
every object has a type in Python. So if I say type of function one, whoops, spelling counts like that, we can see that it was actually a, a function. Now one other type that we see out there uh, quite a bit is we can is boolean. So if we do something like this, var two is equal to true, whoops, like that. And then I do type of <laughs> var two, right? We get our boolean back. And these are probably some of the very common types that we'll see, right? Integers, strings, booleans. One other one might be that if we say var3 uh, is equal to 1.5, and then we do a type of var3, we would get that that's a float. And that sort of adds to our, our toolbox another one of those very, very popular uh, variable types. Let's do one more thing as long as we're here, and then we'll sort of call it a day on this one. Let's do, um, we'll do a function three here. And I will say that, um, this time I'll say, since we're working with C and D, right? We, we know that C and D are two and three. We reverse printed them here. We printed them out in a function and then we changed C to 99 here, but then we realized that it didn't do it globally. Uh, let's see if we can do that globally, and just to make, make it clear what we're doing here, we'll say um, 88, and then I will say something like return C, like that. And then I'll say, um, let me see, var 4 maybe, just to keep us going here, equals function three, something like that. Uh, and then I'll say type of var four. That's an integer. I wonder what's going on there. So let's print var four and I get 88. Now I, I changed the name when I brought it back, right? I used var4 here because I didn't want to keep, confuse it. But if I just said something like this, c is equal to function three, like that. And then I printed c and d. Then I would get the same thing. So, you know, just to avoid confusion, I changed the name here. Uh, but here I use the same variable and we can see that it actually changed the value of what, in this case, C was. So what this really says is that you can change the values all the time. You want to be a little bit careful when you use the same names. And this is one way to bring a value back out of a function and actually change the value of the global variable. All right, I think that will do it. That was some tips and tricks for Python. In this case, we're talking about tips and tricks with uh, variables and maybe a little bit of scoping. And remember, hey, this is Python. You can do this.